Hello everybody, I'm Leah. If you don't know me, I'm a collage artist and Flanzella's Collage College is back in session. Today I'm coming at you with an interesting topic in my opinion, and that is finding your own voice within collage. This is definitely one of the most popular questions I get. And most importantly, I'm very much so complimented on my ability to have a consistent piece of work. And I know that that can be really difficult with collage. With painting or drawing, it's always your hand. Everything always ends up looking kind of the same. In collage, when you're starting with other people's mediums first, it can be really difficult. So how do you blend your styles when using different decades of magazines, for example? So here are my five top tips for finding your artistic voice. Although on this channel I focus on collage, over my lifetime I have had many expertise, let's call them, of different types of art styles. One of my favorite styles of art outside of collage is actually pen and ink. I love to use the quill and make really interesting little shapes and people. Over time I was able to discover new techniques like how I like to do stippling or cross hatching. And over time I realized which parts of it I really liked the most. This is the same for collage. I'm going through papers, I can now look at them and be like, I don't know if this is my style, I know this one is, how can I mix it in to make it part of my style? And so my first tip to you is making a lot of art. If you don't have a style, it might just be because you haven't done it enough. Looking on our Discord channel, there is a lot of seasoned collage artists, expert level collage artists, I'll say, and all of their works look a lot alike, again, similar to mine. And I realize that those are the people that are making the most art, right? So it's a matter of taking the time and dedication to your art thing. Thing as in your expertise or mastering it. The art of 10,000 hours is very important and I do believe in it heavily. One of my favorite examples that I think I've given here before, but is there was a study done where half the students in the class had to make one really good piece and half the students in the class had to make as many pieces as possible throughout the semester. And which one do you think had the better pieces? obviously the one that was doing it every single day. So I think for you, it's the same thing. You will be so much better if you dedicate the time to it. Time is honestly everything. That's definitely what I'm seeing as well with my business in this. I've been doing Flanzella now for four years and it's just a ramp, you know, like as I do more, more things, more opportunities come to me. And I think that the same thing is true for this. As you make more, you're going to see the improvements that you're looking for, 100%. But if you're like, Leah, I've been doing this for 10 years, I'm all over the place, I have so many different techniques that I like to do, that's okay too, but there's always one part of your work that probably comes back to you, and you can probably see some sort of element in between, right? If you're still saying wrong, then we have a couple more things to go through. My next tip is experimentation, and if you're in the boat that I just talked about where you're really not sure, you have a lot going on, you're probably in this stage where you are doing a lot of experimentation. Experimentation is great and I think that everyone should dive very deep into it. I think for me right now, I've been a lot more conservative with my experimental phase with collage. I really like the style that I'm in right now. I know I have a lifetime to create in collage. So I'm trying to like keep it to this kind of similar style for the next little bit. But I always have these ideas of like creating multimedia, bringing in other pieces, trying other techniques, etc. If you're making art right now and you're not really happy with where it is, I highly recommend that you experiment. Maybe it's about getting a little spray bottle with alcohol, spraying it on some of the magazine pieces, seeing what happens with that. Maybe it's making your own watercolor papers and tearing them up. Maybe it's cutting out different parts to pieces that you usually wouldn't. Or making abstract pieces. Or maybe it's looking at the materials that you're using and the tools that you have. Maybe you are cutting out the right things, but you're not really happy with the way you're cutting them. Maybe you could try a scalpel, maybe you could try a gyro knife. There's so many different ways to cut out things as well. And <laughs> I know that I use primarily scissors, but there's so many different ways. And if you're looking to get better, I would highly recommend you train yourself to use all of them to an expert level. There's so many different types of collage out there. There's even day collage, which I really find very fun and I'm sure you guys would as well. Maybe we can do a video about that. And then there's reductive collage where you're cutting out the person, for example, and then using that outline to make a new piece with it. And if you follow me, you know that that's a term that I've coined is reductive collage and using all your older pieces and scraps to make new pieces. And now for my next tip, collage is not just about putting pieces together. It's about telling a story, specifically your story. What do you wanna say? A lot of the time when artists are not able to find their styles, it's maybe because they're also not able to say what they wanna say, or maybe they don't know what they actually really care about deeply. A lot of this could be about you doing some self-exploration. 
What type of art problems or life problems do you have that you would like to talk about in your art? For me, it's always funny. I'm definitely an opinionated person and I feel like that comes through in my art. Whatever I'm feeling and talking about and thinking about in my daily life, I feel like I definitely am able to see in my work. It's like my unconscious brain has a message that it wants everyone to hear and it's not willing to let it go. And if you're not like that, that's totally okay. A lot of collage art is uh, abstract, obviously, and then you have a large portion, the original kind of art, obviously, is being able to criticize society. Like that was what collage was made for. A lot of people say that collage started in like Soviet Russia as a method to kind of push back against dictators. <laughs> and you see that in the posters, there was just so much propaganda everywhere. They were able to screw it up a little bit and have a totally different meaning and that was kind of a pushback and revolt against the government. So how can you do that in your daily life? And if you're not opinionated, what can you say? Or maybe it's even like just escapism, right? Like trying to get away from this world. That's what surrealism definitely feels like for me. I love the magical movies and I'm sure you guys do too. And that's why collage is amazing. You can make people go anywhere. And for me too, that's why I love old magazines, old papers, etc. old movies. I love old movies as well. Um, is because you're able to time travel. We don't have that obviously for like the 1600s. I would love that, but we do have basically for all of the 1900s. And I think this is one of the most amazing things about this time is we can look back and these are like a staple in time. One of my favorite movies I'll mention is Death on the Nile. The original is in the 70s and you get to see 70s Egypt. And I'm like, every time I wanna travel, I wanna go there, right? So it's very cool to like look back and have a staple of that. So how can you incorporate those things into your art? And I think that that's why I love vintage magazines, for example, as I have this longing for time travel. <laughs> The next tip I'm going to give is copying your heroes. And I know that a lot of people get flack for this, but just bear with me here. A little disclosure, it is not okay to take the exact same pieces of paper, glue it together and call it your own for sure. Uh, collage obviously in itself has a lot of issues with that. Copyright is very difficult with collage. I am very aware of that as well. But when it comes to something like this, how can you use collage artist methods? to make your own art better. You should have Pinterest boards if you're making something. I know it's hard to find the pieces, but if you're trying to find your style, it's definitely important to be looking at other people. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't wanna end up copying someone's ideas or that sort of thing, but I don't really find that I find myself doing that, and I hope you don't either. I think that if you're following people and seeing what other things are possible, it's actually gonna open your mind more than it is going to close it. Obviously, there is that scale in your head that you always have to be weighing of is this imitation or if, is this inspiration, make sure that this one's always way heavier than this one. And I think that like when you're starting out and you don't really have a style and you're not a professional in that way, it's 100% okay to be copying people, trying different things, seeing what works for you. Because every person on this planet walks a different life and everyone's style is going to be extremely different. When I'm hosting collage workshops, there's not a single person whose art looks the same. And what's the best thing to do if you don't want people copying you is developing your own style and using your own materials. Back in the olden days when there weren't any art stores, what were people doing? They were making their own art brushes, for example maybe their own scissors or cutting tools. You never know what those things were. Maybe their own papers. And in a modern day, what does that look like? If you want your art to be extremely unique to you, maybe it's you using all of your own photographs, making your own brushes perhaps again, making your own glue. I know some people make wheat paste as their own glue source. For me, I know mine's not super unique to collage artists, but I like to have like my own method of storage and the process from start to finish, I think looks different than a lot of other collage artists. To Salvador Dali again, but here is an example using him. I went to an exhibit last winter and I was blown away by these pieces. I'd never seen them online or anywhere. And there was thousands of these little hand-drawn, almost watercolory looking pieces. And someone asked me like, is that acrylic or watercolor or an, or something else? So like, it's so smooth for acrylic. And I was like, I think it's gouache. And then the person working there came over and she's like, it's not gouache, it is acrylic, but how do you use the acrylic? And we were like, I don't know, like maybe just like lightly smearing it, using your finger, whatever. And the reason it was so smooth is because he was using bread as the paintbrush. 
She said that they did the research and they found all this yeast and little breadcrumbs, like basically in the artwork. And that's the only way that they knew about it. But these are just kind of those secret things that we don't really know about other artists doing. They're trade secrets, let's say. Uh, so how can you make yourself have your own trade secrets? I think as adults, we really need to think about the limitations that we put on our own brain. What is a paintbrush and what is not a paintbrush in that case? What can be used in collage? What is a paper in collage that might look a little bit different? Like what papers we're able to use and which ones we aren't able to use? How we store things, I guess, are all different things. And for me, especially because there is no collage art store, I had to come up with a lot of different methods for filing my papers and keeping them safe and storing them, for example. And then there's one final thing I really wanna to touch on, and that's making art fast. If you wanna develop a style fast, you can do it. But if you're doing it fast, you need to do a one month challenge. Guarantee it will change everything for you. This means every day creating one piece, maybe it's using a different method every day. The point is to be extremely consistent and try new things. A lot of us artists have a ton of different hobbies or focuses, for example, I know a lot of people do like knitting and art and painting and poetry and reading and all those different things, that's great. But what if you dedicated one month to your collage practice 100%? What if you lived and breathed collage every single day for the whole month? What if you read and watched videos on other collage artists and saw what they were doing behind the scenes? If you take the time to make this your Flanzella Collage College, you will definitely have what you need to have your voice. I would argue that finding your voice is one of the hardest things to do when you're becoming an artist. There's so many amazing methods out there. There's so much cool things. How do you funnel it down to be just one method of making things that you absolutely love? I struggled with this a lot 10 years ago. It was impossible for me. I felt like I wanted to do everything. And that's why I did a multimedia degree. It was very versatile. It gave me a little bite of everything. But now if you're trying to develop a style, you need to kind of, you know, try the one method, really dive into it and see if you're able to go from there. Discipline is very important with this. So I would say maybe if you can buddy up with someone that would be super helpful uh, and do a challenge together where you can work to make your style. One resource that I wanted to mention and that is my Discord channel. If you're trying to find your artist style, this is a great place to start. You can share all of your works there with other people get feedback, talk about other methods, ask questions. There's so much great content on there already, so I highly recommend going and checking it out if you haven't already. Having a community is extremely important. It's definitely one of the sufferable points. As artists in this day and age, I feel like we don't have like big areas where we can all just come together and talk. So that's why I wanted to create that Discord channel about collage. I've learned a lot from other people and I know that you will too. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. If you have other methods as well that you'd like to share with the class, please put them down below if you were able to find your style and had some ways of getting around it. Or if you're still struggling with it, would love to hear from you and maybe we can talk through some of those points. Okay guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this session of Flanzella Collage College and I hope that you have an amazing week of creating. And like this video if you haven't, subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.